Welcome. So you probably already know how Informatic On Demand can address every phase of your Salesforce integration budget. Um, today we're going to focus specifically on reporting and backup um, as a solution to simply support your data warehouse and your business intelligence efforts. So the concept of the use case today will be to take um, basic opportunity and order information from Salesforce, um, bring it back on-premise into our Oracle system, um, using our data replication service where we can actually massage and join that data together along with other data from our inventory system so that we can then bring it back into Salesforce and report on it. Let's go ahead and jump right into Informatic On Demand. So remember Informatic On Demand is completely in the cloud application. Um, we simply log in, everything runs in a web browser go to our data services and we can quickly make a new data replication task to replicate all of our Salesforce information regarding the opportunities back on premise to our data warehouse. So we can uh, simply give it a name, orders. Um, we can say that we want to grab the information from Salesforce and what information from Salesforce that we want. We just simply pick out of a list. So for example, account information as well as opportunity information, line item, all the things that have to do with orders, price book, price book entry, and then of course um, product is the other one. So let's go ahead and bring these over. This is the information, these are the objects that we're going to bring back on premise so that we can massage, join, group that data together um, in a business intelligence fashion. So the second step two, and notice we have a nice five step wizard here, is to select our target. So we're going to, of course, give it a prefix. And this is pretty neat because this will allow us to um, bring over data and schema, right? So as things change in Salesforce, they're replicated back to our on-premise data warehouse, either as a files or as database format. And all we do is simply put a prefix. So for example, uh, DW um, will be DW account, DW opportunity, um, DW, opportunity line, so on and so forth. Um, you can also do incremental loads, full loads. If you change stuff in Salesforce, that's nice as well because you can retain or remove the columns as you move forward. So you really have a lot of options here as far as configuration. Um, hooking up to our Oracle system was pretty easy. It's just your basic information about Oracle that you can get from your admin. Or you might already have it set up uh, in an ODBC data source that you have on your computer. So the rest of the wizard options are pretty simple. Um, and actually, they're all optional, but a lot of people use them. For example, field exclusions. If you want to try to limit what goes into your warehouse, you can do that. Maybe I don't really care if it's active. I don't care if the company's annual revenue. Whatever it is, um, you can pick that from all the different objects. Um, we're not going to do anything there this time. Data filter, same thing, but an optional step. Um, a lot of folks say, well, I only want to grab the data that, for example, lives in a certain state. So I can say, you know, only where this billing state is Texas, right? Or something else. Maybe I can do something like the last time it changed, um, updated, you know, last modified date, you know, greater than last runtime. So I have lots of options here. As far as the data source that I want to do, I can also do advanced and potentially do anything that I want. All right, so uh, moving on, another optional step is schedule. A lot of people actually definitely do this one. Uh, you can schedule something every night, every couple hours. Whatever you're looking at doing, um, the schedules can be anything from every couple minutes to every day. Um, and of course, you can set them up pretty simply as well, even starting on certain days of the week. Uh, so that's for the data replication and service in a nutshell. It takes about 10 minutes to set it up. And what happens is uh, when you run the data replication program, you actually get back a grouping of tables. So let me go back in my Oracle setup. Um, I have all these tables called DW, remember that was my prefix, underscore, and then the object name from Salesforce. So this is pretty powerful that you now have all this available to yourself and to your group in relational format. So, you know, as far as querying this data, you can, of course, uh, start by the top, query from DW account. Um, if you want to get a little bit more specific, you can actually jump into grabbing information also from the line items. 
right? So we can get a little bit more specific and only get the accounts that actually have bought something, right? So, uh, you know, jump back into Salesforce here and you can see that, right? I have AT&T um, Universal Card. Um, actually bought this Genwatt Diesel 200. So back into my database, I can go find um, these different folks. Right, and, and so actually I need to qualify the column a little more. I'll show you that in just a minute. But uh, there's my AT&T guy right there. All right, so let me go ahead and qualify this down a little bit more. Let's also get the product and pricing information. And then, of course, uh, instead of all the columns, so we can actually know what we're doing here, let me go ahead and just get a few. All right, so now you see there's my AT&T, bought the generator, he paid $18.99 for it. Uh, different people have bought that same generator for uh, different you know, prices. What I might want to do is go and try to figure out you know, a way to figure out the average price that was paid for the generator, right? So it's just a matter of another SQL tape. Right, and so a lot of you folks that have uh, you know, some of your more powerful business intelligence systems um, your different data warehouses. This is what feeds the data warehouse, right? This is a nice 10 minute way to get that data in the data warehouse so you can actually use it um, and you can do all kinds of cool stuff with this data. All right, so notice I did an average of the unit price. Um, I took out the actual company name because I'll go ahead and do this a little bit better for you. Um, so I can see that, you know, out of all the different folks that bought the diesel, there's only four of them, um, but you might have thousands. Um, they paid an average price of 1989 25 cents. Alright, so this is pretty powerful information that you, can, that you can also work with. Now one thing that uh, I like to show people, once you get that down on premise in your data warehouse, probably the, the coolest thing to do is to actually join it with some of your on-premise systems, right? So for example, we can figure out very easily by just doing a simple join, um, some more information about our different products. So for example, you figure out what category they're in, what product, if the product's available or not. And we do this from a whole different um, database that lives on purpose, right? So this is kind of where the power comes in is, instead of pumping all your data into Salesforce, what you might want to do is so Salesforce user can use it. But if you're only using it for reporting, you can bring that data back down from Salesforce Combine it with all your other enterprise data, and then the sky's the limit as far as what power you have. So I can also take something like this, I can put it into a view, right? So uh, here's that same query we just saw, it's in a view, um, brings back the same data. And now I can take that information, I can put it back into Salesforce, into a custom object, so I can use some of the Salesforce reporting around it, right? So now you're probably starting to see some of the power as far as moving stuff back and forth and how much can I make and help you do that very easily. So let's go make a data synchronization task. Uh, we can do this, uh, bring you know, BI data back into salesforce.com. Um, and then I have a nice six step wizard again um, that really just walks you through what you need. So we wanna grab that information from my Oracle system. Uh, we can simply pick the view out of a list, which is that PR average price. Um, you'll see very quickly that we got the same data that we just queried for based on our Salesforce data that we brought down. All right, so this is where all this stuff uh, really makes it powerful. So then we can go back into Salesforce and then we can pick a target object as far as our custom object. All right, so, you know, maybe I want to put this, this is aircraft information about generators and stuff like that. I can put it back in there. I have the same way to define those data filters. Um, this is where I can do some of my data mapping so I can simply grab over this information. Maybe the uh, you know, product code is a serial number, um, that kind of stuff, the product name is the name, uh, average selling price, you know, basic <laughs> right wing info. But anyway, I can simply bring this over. I have the same schedule that I see and then I can save it. So uh, taking it one step further, if I want to run all this stuff in a row to happen in the middle of the night, middle of the day, um, I can also make something called a task flow, or I can quickly combine these different tasks to accomplish in a dependent fashion what I need to. 
So this is my my reporting solution. Uh, I can set it up to run the schedule, and then I can add this task. So the first thing I want to do is grab that information um, that I just did, put move the information back to my on-premise data warehouse, um, and then I can add another task um, to go ahead and actually bring the data back into Salesforce and then run these dependently with each other. And that's all I have for you guys today. So I appreciate you listening. And until next time, you guys have a great day.